Greetings, pen pals. We have another inexpensive German-made pen uh, uh, today. This is the Diplomat Magnum. This is an inexpensive pen, and as you'll see, very, very comparable to a Lamy Safari, but in many ways, uh, maybe even a, a nicer pen. Let's take a look. Comes packaged on about the simplest way possible, just clipped to a piece of cardboard, so we can just dispense with that for a moment. Um, it's a uh, pretty moderately sized pen. Despite the name Magnum, you would think it would be a huge oversized pen. It is not. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, it's um, uh, just a tiny bit shorter than both these pens and also a bit narrower because it does have a taper to it, which I think is actually pretty, pretty nice. Um, not a heavy pen at all. Weighs in at just 14 grams. Um, it is a um, pull to uncap pen. Um, personally, um, you know, it, it's it's okay lengthwise unposted. Of course, I do like to post, and this pen does post quite nicely. Again, it's a light pen, so there's not a really particularly great reason not to post it. Um, has a nice section. It does have the facets in the section, so it is going to enforce um, a somewhat of a triangular grip, much like, uh, say, the Lamy uh, Safari would. Um, it's got a little bit of a trim ring at the end of the section, which uh, facilitates snapping on the uh, cap. The cap snaps on very, very solidly. It has a nice metal uh, clip, which I really, really like. And it does say Diplomat stamped on the clip. And it also has Germany stamped on the top of the clip. The uh, top of the cap has a plastic disc with a little plastic dome that says Diplomat and product of Germany on it. Um, the um, the um, uh, uh, nib uh, is a pretty nice number five size nib. It says uh, Diplomat Magnum, and uh, in this case, an M for medium. It has a little bit of decorative, somewhat scroll work. Of course, it is a steel nib. And of course, as you'd expect, it has an uninspiring plastic feed. So a couple of things I like about this pen. So materials wise, this pen is, the plastic even feels almost identical to the plastic on the Lamy Safari. This this has got a little bit more, say, sparkle to it, uh, for lack of a better word, and um, it's a little bit more uh, matte finish in that in that the Lamy is a little slicker. But I mean, they really, really are very much identically. Uh, uh, the plastic feels very identical. Um, they both have the ink window in almost the exact same spot. The Diplomat one has this keystone shaped ink window on both sides. I think that looks kind of nice. I think it's definitely nicer looking than the Lamy ink window. They're both actually quite, quite uh, uh, functional, but again, very, very comparable to Lamy Safari. While we're at it, let's compare it in size to the Diplomat that everybody knows. This is a compared to a Diplomat Arrow, and as you can see, just a tiny bit shorter than that pen as well, but of course not as girthy, completely different materials, completely different dimensions, etc. I'm only comparing it because it's the Diplomat pen that I think most people are, are familiar with. Um, again, um, nice pen, uh, pull to uncap, like I said, posts well, um, nice section. Uh, in terms of filling mechanism, um, of course, well, let's talk about the, the fact that it's cartridge converter. Obviously, it's got this big ink window, no eyedropper in here, plus uh, the back has a, a little vent type uh, thing going on there, so that's not going to happen. So you won't be ever eyedroppering this. Now, um, this takes standard international cartridges and converters. It did not come with a converter, but I just... Uh, fitted it with this standard international converter that I had laying around, which seems to work just uh, fine. What it did come with was two things. It came with a, a short standard international uh, in the back of the pen, and uh, installed in the pen was this sort of dummy cartridge with an open end. Um, so you could basically either use a long standard international or have a standard international and a spare. Now, if you ever get a pen with one of these dummy cartridges, just don't throw them away. They're actually super useful for cleaning. What you do is you stick the uh, short standard international cartridge in the section, and then you can stick a um, syringe in there and flush the pen out really well. So they're actually useful for cleaning. Don't throw these away. So back to comparing this to the Lamy Safari, because I think these are really, really comparable uh, pens in the sense that they're sort of the same price point, German-made plasticky pens, with a um, with a, uh, a, a triangular a grip, etc. 
Um, I personally think this is actually a better pen. I mean, I think it's just stylistically, I really like, and generally I don't, I'm not a big fan of the thinner pens, but I really like the taper on this thing. I like these facets on the side of the barrel. The fact that it takes standard international is uh, to me a big plus over the, uh, over the Lamy. I like the clip. Um, I just think this, 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 given the choice between the two, um, unless you absolutely need to have the girth of your pen that the uh, Lamy is, um, this is definitely gives uh, the old uh, favorite Lamy Safari a run for its money. Uh, this clearly is not available in the huge array of colors that this is available in. Plus, you do have the uh, uh, wider range of Lamy nibs, including gold nibs that you could swap in with this, but this does take a, num a standard number five nib, so you shouldn't have too much trouble replacing the nib on this if you really wanted to. Uh, anyway, but haven't talked yet about how it writes. And of course you want to see that, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, what we're writing with here today is a Diplomat. Magnum. And this has a number five steel nib. And this is in medium. This is actually pretty fine for a medium for a German nib. Normally German nibs run a little bit on the wide side, but this is this is a little fine for a medium. Um, but this writes well, it's smooth. It has a good flow. I'd say it's about average wetness. Um, all in all a nice writer. And again, it is a fairly standard number five size steel nib. Um, which you should be able to easily replace if you so choose. But a nice writing pen, comfortable pen to hold. Again, you do have this triangular uh, enforced grip with the facets on it. So uh, if that's something that is disagreeable to you, you're not going to be happy with this pen. But if you're okay with that, then then you will probably like it. And again, if you're a fan of, say, Alami Safari, I would definitely give this a try because it definitely gives um, our old favorite Alami Safari a definite run for its uh, money. Um, so that is our, a uh, diplomat Magnum again, pretty nice pen, but you know what, what would be pretty nice for sure would be pretty nice. If you folks could all please like comment, share and subscribe. If you could do those small things. It would be very, very much appreciated. So that's about it for this pen. Pretty nice pen. Again, inexpensive pen. Um, not terribly well known, at least here in the US. I guess probably in more of their core market in Europe, it might be a, a better known pen. Um, but let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? All right, this is yet another ink from Noodlers. This is Noodlers X Feather. Sometimes that's pronounced X feather, sometimes it's pronounced anti feather, but you know the deal. X feather blue. So, Noodler's X feather has been around for years. It is a black ink. So, this is X feather blue. So, basically, this is the blue version of the X feather ink. So, the deal with this ink is that the theory behind it is it takes a bit longer to dry, but as a consequence of that, it will not feather on cheap paper. So, Let's uh, let's take a look at a few th examples just to see what we're talking about with this and compare it to some other inks and determine if the anti-feather properties of this um, really are make a difference in our material. So let's take a look at a writing sample. This is on what is conventionally called cheap copy paper. This is literally from a, a, a ream of copy paper uh, for uh, an I use for an inkjet printer that I bought at Walgreens, so it doesn't get any cheaper or more generic than this. So this is what the Noodleless X Feather Blue looks like, and then we just compared it to two other sort of ordinary looking inks, Pilot Blue and Waterman Serenity Blue. Now, all these are written three different pens with different nibs, etc., so it's not a 100% scientific comparison. But you see, on cheap copy paper, yes, the Noodleless X Feather doesn't feather, but frankly, um, these other the other two inks don't really feather very much either so i'm not seeing a ton of difference here i mean certainly not enough to make a really big difference here at least on this paper let's take let's take a look on something else so here is a field notes notebook which again is a very popular notebook 
fairly fountain pen, pr pen friendly, but not, you know, a, not 100% fountain pen. It's not like designed for a fountain pen, but it's generally considered to be fairly fountain pen friendly. Again, does a pretty good job. I think at least on the Pilot Blue, you can see a bit more, a bit of feathering. Again, you don't see any here, but then again, you really don't see any here with the Waterman Serenity Blue uh, either. So again, uh, not making a terrible difference. But now let's talk about a use case that I think this is really, really designed for, and that's writing on, say, newsprint. So here's a crossword puzzle from the newspaper. Again, the Noodleless X Feather Blue does a great job, doesn't feather. But does it do that much of a better job than the Pilot Blue and the Waterman Serenity Blue too? Because both of these, neither of which are sold or marketed or designed to have anti-feather properties, seem to do a pretty good job on this cheap newspaper. Now, here is one case where I think it, I can, was able to find an actual significant material difference, but it's not a case that I can imagine anybody ever using, and it's on a napkin. So here's Noodler's X Feather Blue on the napkin. And as you can see, not really feathering. I mean, it spreads out wide, but I won't exactly call it feathering. The Pilot Blue is spreading out wider and one could say, yes, definitely feathering. The Waterman Serenity Blue, it didn't really feather much. Now what happened here was the nib kept, the nib in this particular pen that I was using kept catching on the napkin material. So it's really not the best test in the world, but you can see where you have the sort of the straight lines here uh, in the Waterman Serenity Blue. You're not really seeing a ton of feathering even on this napkin. So again, yes, does this, does this uh, Noodleless X Feather Blue have anti-feathering properties and does it do everything it's advertised to be and is it exactly what they say it is? Yes, it is. The real question is, is it so much better at that than just sort of run-of-the-mill blue inks that you need to run out and buy this? And the answer is, I'm not sure. Like, if you're going to do uh, uh, crossword puzzles in a newspaper, I, I would say this Pilot Blue or the Waterman Serenity Blue do a uh, are serviceable and do a perfectly fine job uh, compared to, the, say, the Noodler's X Feather Blue. It certainly works. They're not misrepresenting what it does. But the question is, is this a feature that you need. Now, granted, they're not charging you extra for this. This is an inexpensive ink. It's the same inexpensive price as any of the other uh, uh, Noodler's inks. It's a very nice shade of blue, etc. Let's talk about that for a moment while we're at it. So let's look at the color cards while we're at it. So here's Noodler's X Feather Blue. Um, and as you can see, it's, 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 it's a nice, attractive shade of blue. It's a fairly dark, pretty saturated uh, blue ink. Um, it has a small amount of sheen in the, in the, in like when you really, uh, glob it on here, but in general, I wouldn't exactly call it a sheening ink, but it does, it does look, uh, look quite nice. Just uh, for completeness sake, here it is to compare it to that pilot blue that we were looking at, which is a much lighter ink and the Waterman Serenity blue, which is comparable in, uh, just in terms of darkness. It's, it's somewhat, um, a comparable in terms of darkness of blueness. Um, uh, uh, again, um, just to compare it with some other very, very saturated uh, blue inks. Here it is compared to KWZ Azure number no. five. Um, and here it is compared to Organic Studio Ralph Waldo Emerson Twilight Blue. Now, both the uh, Azure number no. five and the Twilight Blue are fairly high sheening inks. So forget the sheening part, but if you're looking at the saturation level of the blue, I think they're very, very comparable. So that's our Noodleless X Feather Blue. Um, that's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper, shall we? All right, what we got here is Noodler's X Feather Blue. Like I said, nice uh, shade of blue. You definitely do get some color variation in it on this um, Tomoe River paper, which I think uh, looks quite nice. It's a pretty color. It's a pretty, it's a pretty shade of blue, even if you set aside the anti-feathering feature, which, uh, which is a nice thing to have. I mean, no doubt about that. Um, anyway, I think that will just about do it for this video for this week. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching it because I sure enjoyed making it. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.